Okay, so we're coming now into chapter 15. Uh, we're going to do a little bit closer work in this chapter. And if you want to think about sort of a key event in chapter 15, the main event we'll call the lynch mob. Um, at the county jail. Okay, so think back to the historical context videos and background work we did at the beginning of the novel. Um, you're thinking in terms of like Jim Crow laws in the US, segregation, violence, groups like the KKK, Ku Klux Klan, are going to be mentioned. And um, violent attacks on black people were extremely common, especially what they call lynch mobs. Uh, lynching is uh, when a group of people gang up on a person and attack them and hurt them and maybe even kill them, um, oftentimes in in very horrific ways, okay? So we've got at the county jail, uh, Tom Robinson, okay, is going to be at the county jail, um, is protected there, waiting for the court case. But remember, we're just in a small town, and basically you've just got the sheriff to protect him. And if a mob comes, that's a big group of violent guys, they have guns, it can be really dangerous. Now, remember, we're seeing this all through Scout's perspective, right? So there's that childish... Missing my L, sorry. There's a childish innocence to Scout's perspective. She doesn't really understand adult realities. So when it comes to like the KKK and violence and lynch mobs, she's not really aware how dangerous this situation really is. So so keep Keep that in mind, that's in the background. So basically the sheriff comes, tells Atticus, hey, we're going to be putting Tom in the county jail. You might want to kind of keep your eye out there, maybe come and keep guard. And so they start to talk a little bit at home about what's going on, and the kids can kind of sense something tense is going on, that there's a danger in the air, that there's kind of a worrying, okay? So Atticus senses that from Jem, and he lowered the paper, gazed at Jem. What have you been reading? He asked. Then he said gently, no son, those were our friends. So Jem is worried that, you know, the sheriff and the men who came to the house, he was worried that maybe they're a mob, maybe they're dangerous. And he says, it wasn't a, a gang. Jem was looking from the corner of corners of his eyes. Atticus tried to stifle a smile, but didn't make it. No, we don't have mobs and that nonsense in Maycomb. I've never heard of a gang in Maycomb. Ku Klux got after some Catholics one time. Never heard of any Catholics in Macomb either, said Atticus. You're confusing that with something else. Way back, about 1920, there was a clan, but it was a political organization more than anything. Besides, they couldn't find anybody to scare. They paraded Mr. Sam Levy's house one night, but Sam just stood on his porch and told him things had come to a pretty pass. He'd sold him the very sheets on their backs. Sam made them so ashamed of themselves, they went away. And basically, you know, he says, like, don't worry. 
We don't have Ku Klux Klan here. It'll never come back. We don't have mobs in Macomb. And he's smiling. So in a sense, he believes that. But it doesn't mean that there's no risk here. But Atticus seems confident, but he also has to show his kids to keep them from not worrying, even though he knows this is actually a kind of risky situation that could get him in physical trouble and maybe even his children. Okay, so he's going to go to the jail where Tom Robinson is and just set up there, bring his gun, and just sort of camp out to try to protect him a bit. So I'm going to skip down a bit as we go to the county jail. Um, Jem and the others, Dill and Scout, follow Atticus secretly to the jail, and they've been watching him from that area, and they're going and getting closer to that area. And there's a little description here I want to point out just quickly. We won't spend too much time on it. But Mr. Underwood not only ran the Maycomb Tribune office, that's the local newspaper, he lived in it, that is, above it. He covered the courthouse and jailhouse news simply by looking out his upstairs window. The office building was on the northeast corner of the square, and to reach it, we had to pass the jail. So just want to point out Mr. Underwood. He's the newspaper owner, the town newspaper, the Maycomb Tribune, and he's going to be a helper to Atticus, actually. He's got, you know, from his office building, he's got a clear sight, you know, over here of that, the county jail building. And that's going to be important because, you know, he's actually going to be in there with his gun, taking care of Atticus, like backing up Atticus, who's sitting down in front of the porch, you know, guarding it from the mob. All right. So he is supporting Atticus. So what does that say about Mr. Underwood and racism? Right, he's also anti-racist. He's supporting Atticus. Then we have a very gothic description of the jail cell. You can go ahead and you know read that more closely and try to find the gothic details. But we want to get to the confrontation uh, between the mob and when the kids show up. Okay. And for some reason, my program is doing something weird here. Sorry about that. All right, so the mob shows up and, you know, there's danger here. It's not, um, you know, a, a, it's not a simple situation. There's a group of men. They all have guns. It's dark out. It's scary. The kids are watching and getting nervous, and they've said that um, this group did something fake to make the sheriff go out of the town, deep in the woods, like they tricked him on a snipe hunt. A snipe is a fake creature, imaginary bird. Um, so they said, yeah, we tricked the sheriff. He's not coming to help you. And Atticus is there alone with his gun. They don't know Mr. Underwood is in his office, like with his gun, also protecting Atticus. As far as they can tell, Atticus is alone. And it's very dangerous. This is a mob with guns. They want to kill Tom Robinson. It's not a joke. It's real danger. And suddenly, uh, you know, the kids burst in. They don't realize this is a super dangerous situation. And they say, hey, Atticus, I thought he would have a fine surprise, but his face killed my joy. 
A flash of plain fear was going out of his eyes, but returned when Dill and Jem wriggled into the light. Why is there fear? Because there's real uh, danger here. It's not a joke. Kids don't know what's really going on here. Okay. Now, Atticus keeps telling them, go home, go home. Why? Because there's real danger. He's got to get them out of here before something happens. And then one big man actually does threaten them, says, I'll send him home. And he grabs Jem roughly. Right? So physical violence here. And Atticus is begging them to go. He says, please, please, because there's real danger. But then suddenly something changes, okay? And we'll try to get this in before the video time ends, but I may need to do another one. Scout notices a familiar face, and she says, Hey, Mr. Cunningham, the man did not hear me, it seemed. Hey, Mr. Cunningham, how's your entailment getting along? Mr. Walter Cunningham's legal affairs were well known to me. Atticus had once described them at length. The big man blinked hooked his thumbs in his overall straps. He seemed uncomfortable. He cleared his throat and looked away. My friendly overture had fallen flat. Notice she's being friendly. She's taking an interest in his life. She remembered he has this legal problem, this entailment, and she's talking about something about his life, just like Atticus did with Walter Cunningham's son when they came for lunch. That's why he feels awkward. She's showing kindness to him. She doesn't realize this is a dangerous mob. Mr. Cunningham wore no hat, and the top half of his forehead was white in contrast to his sun-scorched face, which led me to believe that he wore one most days. He shifted his feet clad in heavy work shoes. Don't you remember me, Mr. Cunningham? I'm Jean Louise Finch. You brought us some hickory nuts one time, remember? I began to sense the futility one feels when unacknowledged by a chance acquaintance. I go to school with Walter, I began. He's your boy, ain't he? Ain't he, sir? Mr. Cunningham was moved to a faint nod. He did know me, after all. He's in my grade, I said, and he does right well. He's a good boy, I added, a real nice boy. We brought him home for dinner one time. Maybe he told you about me. I beat him up one time, when, but he was real nice about it. Tell him hey for me, won't you? Atticus had said it was a polite thing to talk to people about what they were interested in. So notice this is Atticus's moral principle. Step in someone else's shoes. Or he even says inside their skin, remember? She's practicing that. She's doing what he taught her. Mr. Cunningham displayed no interest in his son. So I tackled his entailment once more in a last-ditch effort to make him feel at home. Entailments are bad, I was advising him, when I slowly awoke to the fact that I was addressing the entire aggregation. The men were all looking at me. Some had their mouths half open. Atticus had stopped poking at Jem. They were standing together beside Dill. Their attention amounted to fascination. Atticus's mouth even was half open in an attitude he had once described as uncouth. Our eyes met, and he shut it. Well, Atticus, I was just saying to Mr. Cunningham that entailments are bad and all that, but you said not to worry. It takes a long time sometimes, but that you'd all, that you'd all ride it out together. I was slowly drying up, wondering what you deceit I had committed. Entailments seemed all right enough for living room talk. So notice something. She's showing compassion for his situation and empathy feeling what he feels okay that's key to defeating evil and prejudice and racism she's practicing what atticus taught her and what happens they get embarrassed they get enshamed ashamed She's unsure what's happening. What's the matter? And then what does Mr. Cunningham do? He did a peculiar thing. He squatted down, took me by both my shoulders and said, I'll tell him you said, hey, little lady. And he says, let's clear out. Let's get going, boys. And he cancels the mob. They're not going to kill Tom.